After watching this video, you should have a fundamental understanding of the relationship between the equilibrium constant for a reaction and the enthalpy change, entropy change, and the free energy for that process. I'm going to use a simulation here to diagrammatically illustrate these relationships and talk about four different hypothetical situations where I change the signs of delta H and delta S and show you how that affects the temperature dependence of a process and how K is affected. I'd like to take a little time to discuss with you the relationship between the energetic stability of reactants versus products, the entropic stability, free energy, and the equilibrium constant. I have this little simulation here that I'm going to use to illustrate my thinking. I'm also going to draw over here. The first thing I want to do is to remind you of the relationship between the equilibrium constant and enthalpy and entropy. We know that the equilibrium constant is equal to E to the minus delta H over RT plus delta S over R. And there's some important things to remember when we're looking at this equation. First off, we know that the sign on delta H gives us an indication of how the system will re respond, or the equilibrium constant will change with changes in T. That's something to pay attention to. And essentially the reason that is is because if this value right here is a positive value for an endothermic process, well then increasing T will decrease the weight of this component in the exponent which will cause K to go up. So we know for endothermic processes the K tends to increase in general with an increase in temperature. For exothermic processes it's the opposite. If we make this delta H a minus, these two minuses will cancel and therefore increasing T will actually increase the weight of the denominator here, decreasing this number and causing K to go down. So we can say for exothermic processes, increasing T in general will cause the equilibrium constant to decrease. The reaction will become more reactant favored at higher T for exothermic processes. Okay, let's go over here now and look at this hypothetical reaction of A goes to B. It's a simple process. What I have here is I have a reaction pathway diagram here that I can control with my simulation. In other words, I can control the relative potential energy of my reactant to my product. Over here, I have a slider on this graph, which is a plot of free energy versus extent. And here I can control the delta S for the process. You can see here the equilibrium constant, which in this case is the uh, products over the reactants. Uh, there's no exponents here because I have no coefficients, so it's concentration of B over A. And you can see that when I control the variables here, I control the equilibrium constant. I also have a slider for T. So I want to run through a couple sort of thought experiments here to illustrate the relationship between T and uh, the extent of a reaction, the directionality. Is it reactant favored or product favored? Let's start off with a situation where A goes to B is exothermic and has a positive increase in entropy. We know that this is a situation where the reaction is energetically favored and entropically favored. We know that that means that the reaction will always be favored regardless of T. And let me illustrate that over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the potential energy of the reactants higher than the products. I'm going to make this lower dramatic. And I'm going to make the delta S positive. Now, I want to show you something with this graph over here. First of all, one thing to note is that the distance in energy, free energy, from here to the where the red line intersects all B on the x-axis here is the actual delta G you would calculate using an equation like delta G equals delta H minus T delta S, or at 25C, the uh, delta G change using uh, free energy of formation values. Okay, now let's take a look at this. So you can see that the equilibrium constant is greater than one. So that means that this is a product favored process. We can see it's energetically favored and here it's entropically favored. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna increase T here and you can see that it's exothermic so increasing T will cause the equilibrium constant to go down but I will never be able to get the process to be reactant favored. In other words, the K value will never get below one. So in general, we say that these processes are always product favored. So we don't really concern ourselves with the temperature dependence of 
processes that are energetically and entropically favored. And you can see as I increase T that I will have a slight shift in the equilibrium constant down, but I'll never get it to be reactant favored because they're, it's both energetically and entropically favored. So to sort of further drive this, this home, I'm just going to sketch quickly a PEC diagram. Boy, we've got three diagrams now we can think about. I'll sketch a mini one here. And we know that for the uh, a PEC diagram for this process, where it's potential energy versus the number of configurations, we know we're actually plotting H versus S here, that we can say that the products are of higher configurational stability or entropic stability and higher or lower potential energy or more energetically stable. So the products would be here on the PEC diagram, the reactants here. In this situation, we know that the products will always be favored. Okay, now let's take a look at a situation where the delta H and delta S are the opposite signs than what we have here. Now let's consider a situation where the reaction is endothermic and there's a drop in entropy on going from reactants to products. Let's go over to our simulation and set up this scenario. Well, if it's endothermic, on the reaction pathway diagram, I'm going to make the uh, products of higher potential energy than the reactants and I'm going to make delta S negative on this slider. So you can see that I have a K value less than uh, 1. And now because the process is both energetically and entropically unfavored, you can see that no matter what I do here, the T value will not affect the equilibrium constant going above 1. In other words, this will always remain reactant favored. Of course, the equilibrium constant will increase a little bit uh, as I increase T because this is an endothermic process. And we know that in an endothermic process, the equilibrium constant increases with an increase in T. We're supplying more energy to increase the likelihood of forming the higher potential energy product. But I can never get the process to be product favored. So in this situation, we don't really concern ourselves with the reaction flipping from reactant to product favored with T. This is always going to be unfavored, regardless of T. Now, I just want to take another moment here to talk about this diagram. Um, you can see here that in this situation, the process is unfavored. The equilibrium constant is less than 1. Um, the free energy, again, that you would calculate using delta G equals delta H minus T delta S is the difference between right there and right there. But notice that blue dot there. That is the minimum of free energy. And as this process progresses, there is a minimization of free energy that occurs. When that minimization is achieved, that is when the reaction is in the state of equilibrium. And you can see if I track down here to the extent axis, that would be almost all reactant, expressed also by the equilibrium constant value. Now, if I increase T, I can make that equilibrium point shift a little bit, but I can never get it to cross the line to be product favored versus reactant favored. Okay, now let's take a look at the two other situations where we do have temperature dependence. Okay, now I want to take a look at the two situations where the equilibrium constant is very temperature dependent in the sense that the reaction could go from reactant favored to product favored or vice versa. Let's start with a situation where both the signs of delta H and delta S are negative. In other words, it's energetically favored to form products, but entropically unfavored. Let me go over to my simulation here and set up that situation. I'm going to set up my reaction pathway diagram to represent an exothermic process. So I'm going to set the delta S to be ne some negative value. You can see at the T that I have right now, which is 912K, this process is actually favored. And now what one, what one could do is make a prediction of what would happen to that K value as I decrease T. So let's think about this for a second. The process is exothermic. I know that if I increase the temperature of an exothermic process, I want to direct your attention up here. If it's exothermic, that means these two negative signs would cancel. That means I would be increasing the denominator of this part of the exponent which would be making this value go down, decreasing the energetic contribution to the K value, making this go down. So I should see the process, uh, the K value go down with increasing T, so therefore it should go up with decreasing T. And let's check it. 
So we should see this equilibrium point here shift to the right as I decrease t, and this number should go up. And sure enough, it does. It increases the equilibrium constant, and that point there increases as well. So now we could say, well, what's the crossover point here? We know that the crossover point, if we think about delta G equals delta H minus T delta S, if we set this value here equal to zero, we would essentially be solving for the temperature at which K is equal to one. Now, where am I getting that? Well, remember this expression here was derived from the fact that delta G uh, standard is equal to minus RT ln K. If I set this value to zero, that means my equilibrium constant is one. And in this situation, that's when I would have 50-50 of each. It's not always the case. It depends on the equilibrium constant. But for this situation, that would be the crossover point. So that means if I rearrange this equation, the crossover temperature is a ratio of the enthalpy change to the entropy change. For this reaction, how I have the value set, that would be the crossover point. Notice that when the K value is about one, that I have this blue dot is right about in the center there. I have it about one. And now if I increase T higher across the crossover point, this reaction goes from product favored to reactant favored. Exothermic, the sine of delta H dictates how the system's K value and its uh, directionality changes with T. Okay, now let's quickly think about the situation where it's endothermic and there's a positive increase in entropy. Now, if the reaction is endothermic with an increase in entropy, I'm going to set up my reaction pathway diagram to represent endothermic. I'm going to set my delta S to be positive. And you can see at the temperature I'm at now, the process is favored, represented by the K value being greater than one. Now I'm going to make a prediction how K would change with a decrease in T, because I'm starting at a higher temperature here, so I'll do a decrease. Let's go over here, just let the equation speak to us. If the delta H is positive, that means increasing T here will increase this component of the exponent, which is uh, a negative value, but it will make that negative value smaller, which means that this value of K will go up with increasing T. Now let's check that. Of course, I'll just do a little increase of T here. You can see the K value goes up. And now as I decrease T for the endothermic process, the K value goes down. And because the two signs of of, or the signs of enthalpy and entropy are the same, I can get a crossover point, and for how I have it set here is around 878K approximately. And below that, the process is reactant favored, with the K being less than one. So the point here is, when you want to make predictions about how the equilibrium constant will change with temperature, you have to focus on the sign of delta H. In a situation where the process has the same sign of delta H and delta S, then we can switch the reaction from being reactant favored to product favored or vice versa by changing T. Okay, let's look at a real reaction here. This is the reaction of sulfur dioxide combusting with oxygen to form sulfur trioxide. And I want to just make a qualitative prediction of the signs of delta H and delta S based on structural features here of the reactants and products. Let's start off with delta H. We know that in general, if we go from weaker to stronger bonds, delta H would be negative. And one way we can evaluate that is to look at the types of bonds we have. In this case, the mantra I use uh, in class that works many times is that if I go from AA bonds, or bonds between the same atoms, like I have an O2 here, to AB bonds, or bonds between different atoms, AB bonds in general tend to be stronger than AA bonds. Not all the time, but this works more often than not. So we would predict this process to be exothermic, and of course it's a combustion process, which of course further supports our prediction. How about delta S? Well, this one's pretty straightforward. The moles of gas in a reaction, when we have gases, can be a dominant factor for the entropy change. In this case, we're going from one to three moles of gas to two moles of gas. 
I'm using the coefficients to determine that. So that's a drop in moles of gas, so we would for sure predict that to be a drop in entropy. It turns out that if I calculate the delta H and delta S using delta H of formation values and molar entropy values, I get uh, values that confirm these predictions. So for my, at 298 Kelvin, my uh, delta H is about 198 kilojoules approximately, and my delta S is around, and I'm going to put this in kilojoules, is around negative 0.188 kilojoules. Okay, so uh, I, my uh, predictions are verified by calculations. By the way, if I calculate delta G here using delta G equals delta H minus T delta S using these values, I will get a value at 298 of around a, minus 142 kilojoules. That means it's favored at 298. Now let's look over here at my simulation. Now this is not SO2 plus O2 going to SO3. So you sort of have to ignore the A to B for a moment and ignore this part of the simulation for a moment. I just want to focus on the diagrams here. I, I set it up to represent an exothermic process like this reaction and I made the delta S negative. And I set it to around 298, close to it. Now what I'm going to do is make a prediction here of how the K value will change with T. I know that it's exothermic, which means that as I increase temperature, it will become more reactant favored, which means K should go down. And I can just look at this number here as sort of an approximation of what's happening. So I'm going to increase T. And sure enough, I will get to some point where there's a crossover temperature. And when I get to that crossover temperature, you can see that the K value will go to 1. And at that point, it's crossover. And then above that, I would go to a reactant favored process. Actually, the uh, temperature I have here in the simulation is pretty close to what you calculate for the crossover temperature here. If you do the calculation setting delta G equal to 0, then you get a value of around uh, 1056 Kelvin. So this is pretty close in simulating this reaction. So there is an example of how you can apply the thinking. In this situation, both the signs of delta H and delta S were the same. We have temperature dependence or a crossover temperature. And there we have now these new plots that we can use. We have now way, different ways to visualize the uh, energetics and, um, and the free energy change of reactions. And now what you should do is practice by looking at various reactions and see if you can make predictions about how K will change as temperature changes.